Hi, this video is going to be on efficient evolving neural networks uh, using NEAT, Neuroevolution of Augmenting Topologies, uh, which is a genetic algorithm, and the paper for which is the link to it will be in the description. I've been learning NEAT for some time now, and I've written it from scratch in C Sharp and tested it in Unity 3D, uh, which you can see here. So what I want to showcase is an example of creatures that evolve uh, neural networks over various generations to seek out food and avoid obstacles such as walls. So this is what the creature looks like. Uh, it has 18 sight detection centers which are denoted in red. The green boxes are walls and the white boxes, the little ones, are food. So this creature has to essentially evolve a smart neural network that can make use of these uh, sensors and be able to create a mental map of what it means to see a wall versus what it means to see a food. Uh, this is extremely crucial because if not, if the creature were to ever touch the wall, not only will it be killed, its fitness will be set to zero. And in this case, fitness is a measurement of how many how much food it eats and how long the creature lives. So suppose a creature lives one second, then it gets one point. If it lives 50 seconds, it gets 50 points. Um, and on top of that, for every food the creature eats, uh, it will get a quarter point. So if it eats four food, it has uh, one point. So the simulation for any creature is finished when it touches the wall, so it's completely dead. Or if it starves to death, uh, starving to death happens if it cannot find a, f a food source within three seconds. Um, or if the simulation time runs out. So before I get started, I just want to quickly explain the panel system, uh, how the panel system works. So up here is the graph. Uh, graph will just literally move from left to right. Uh, left meaning the most current generation that was computed. So this point here represents uh, generation 15, whereas this point here represents generation 1. Uh, this is just action information to let me know uh, which buttons are pressed and what's currently happening. This is the neural network for the most current generation that was computed. So the highest ranking neural network. So for generation 15, highest fitness 42.3, this is the neural network for that. Uh, over here, it's just a progress bar. So how to understand this neural network? There, uh, the green nodes here are the input neurons. The white nodes are the output neurons. These red nodes here are the hidden neurons. Um, each of these connections you see are the weight connections uh, between each of the neurons. There are 21 uh, input neurons, uh, with 18 of them being the sight detection sensors. Uh, this one here represents life, so the neural, uh, the neural network knows what the, what the current health of the food seeker is. Next one represents its orientation in radians. Uh, so it knows which way it's pointing and the, finally the last one is the bias neuron. Uh, green lines are positive connections, red lines are negative connections. The thicker the line, the greater the weight. So there are two output neurons. Uh, the first one represents the speed in its uh, uh, orientation that the food seeker is pointing and the second rep uh, represents its uh, rotational velocity. So I think the best way to understand it is just to start from scratch. So first thing I'm going to do is click this button here, which is create new. Uh, this just creates a set of a random set of neural networks. Uh, I'm going to run it at time scale one, and I'm going to run it for about 10 generations. So now it's actually computing. And what I'm going to do is switch to view mode. So, uh, so here's the simulation that's actually running. Um, if you see any white lines, uh, so the health basically goes down from red to white, uh, meaning that the creature is dying because it can't find food. Uh, oh, this creature actually knows how to find food. It's actually getting kind of good at it. Um, so the main point is basically to be able to detect food. Uh, so that's that, that one simulation finished. Um, so many creatures died right here. So the point is to be able to detect food and try to be avoid and uh, try to avoid walls. So this creature actually I think it knows uh, actually I think we're just spinning in circles. Um, he's getting confused. He dies. Uh, 
so over many generations the point is they'll learn to be able to detect food versus uh, a wall and that's extremely crucial uh, so it, they need to be able to understand what it means to see a food uh, create a mental model of what it means to see a food versus what it means to see a wall so as I've said before uh, one of the most important things is to avoid the wall because it doesn't matter how good the creature does you know how many how much food it gets if it ever touches the wall not only will it die uh, its fitness will be set to zero so all that work that it might have done um, to gather food would mean nothing the population calculations that I use uh, to calculate the next wave of what the species size should look like is using what's called explicit fitness sharing so that means that every uh, every uh, creatures in each species will contribute to the overall fitness of that species well what this basically means is that the best creatures you know might might do amazing but that doesn't really make much of a difference if the rest of the species does absolutely horrible this not only limits the population of a certain species to you know a low number thus you know uh, creating innovation actually you can even see that here uh, each different color of these uh, food seekers are a different are from different species the same color means the same species and different color means different species coming back to here we can actually start to see the skill of the food seeker slowly going up it's actually went down right now but uh, overall we should see a trend that makes it go up um, we can also start to see that the food seeker is actually not really it's, it's you know sometimes it chooses not to use a lot of the uh, uh, its uh, input sensors because it's uh, what, what I'm guessing what's actually happening is that some of these food seeker actually decide to use a limited number of sensors but make them extremely sensitive because it because the food uh, the area of uh, of you know hit detection is so small if the if the um, the seeker decides to turn then you know it's going to miss the food so it can you know it can actually you know maybe create some kind of a map of between what it has seen before so because uh, this is needed it actually uses what's uh, called a recurrent it's able to create what's called uh, recurrent connections which are just connections that connect to themselves uh, which give it some kind of a very basic temporal memory so uh so this was one of the big uh, one of the reasons we can see that uh, it's not using many of these other sensors because the sensors that this creature here evolved to use are enough are, are sensitive enough to be able to make the distinction between a wall and a food so what i'm gonna do now is just leave it running you guys can just watch it and maybe find some, if i see something interesting i'll you know i'll say something about it I think you can already start to see um, some really smart creatures that even in a sense wait out they wait they turn around they look around you know to see if, if the you know if the food is still there before they go and get it uh, this you know kind of shows a smart decision process that is you know taking place if you were to if you were to try to hard code it you know take all these 18 sensors and its life and it's you know whatever and you know take all of that into account you have to sort of you know you would it would take a very long time to build a very complex model a very complex you know piece of hard-coded you know, set of rules that will allow you know the squeezer to survive in this kind of an environment but here with machine learning we can already see that in you know in literally less than 10 generations of computing and I'm not even computing at a fast speed yeah I can do this 25 times faster if I if, if I wanted to and this is probably going to be a little bit of a stretch but you know suppose you wanted to compute some you know really interesting model 
a simulation of something in the real world you know in this case suppose the sensors were some kind of a laser lidar system you know would you really want to buy 18 you know lidar detectors what if you wanted to only buy the most minimal amount required to be able to do a certain task maybe you could create a really interesting simulation and then run it over you know this kind of algorithm and then you can drop that you know buying 18 lidar you know laser systems down to maybe like three so as you can see we've run about 52 generations now uh, this is this over here being generation one so we can actually see there was a quick little spike here you know, some kind of amazing neural network probably evolved and then it's been kind of stable but I think mostly going downhill and then it's went back up sort of here but and that's perfectly fine considering the fact that this is actually a very undeterministic system um, you know the food is randomly distributed and the orientation of the creatures is completely random so, uh, so and their placement is completely random too so this means that uh, you know obviously go having sort of you know sh sharp drops is perfectly fine uh, in this kind of undeterministic system but and also if, even if it does go down that's perfectly fine because um, if the entire population is increasing at the same rate, you know, at a good rate, then that means that more creatures are able to find food, more creatures are able to go towards food. If more creatures are able to go towards food, then that means the overall population has less food to eat. So having less fitness is perfectly fine in this kind of an environment. We can also see that, th so this, this is the neural network for generation 52, the greatest so the highest fitness, we can actually see that this neural network is this creature was only using one, two, three, four, five, six of its uh, input neurons. So it's so not only is it so the fact that because it's using less of them, less uh, less input neurons, that means more of its um, connections are more sensitive to change. So I just want to leave it off here with the simulation running, and um, the link to program is going to be in the description below.